One of the Nationals' top prospects, Elijah Green, made his spring training debut yesterday, and boy, did he make a splash, going one for two with a two RBI triple, which makes the question of today's show, who has the higher ceiling, James Wood or Elijah Green? We'll get to that right after this. You are Locked On Nationals, your daily Washington Nationals podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Ultimate Baseball GM. Ever dreamed of becoming an MLB GM and managing your baseball franchise? Then this game is definitely for you. To download the game, just visit ultimatebaseballgm.com or look it up on the app stores. Our listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo code LOCKED ON, all caps, in the game. And thank you for making Locked On Nationals your first listen every day as we are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. I'm your host, Ryan Clary, and I have taken my passion for baseball into podcast form here with the Locked On Podcast Network, where you get your team every single day. And today we got to get into Elijah Green, the fifth overall pick in the 2022 MLB draft, the Nationals' third-ranked prospect according to MLB Pipeline. And guys, Elijah Green has arrived. And this brings up the question, because I do believe this. I think the Nationals right now have two of the higher ceiling prospects in all of minor league baseball. Of all the prospects, I believe that Elijah Green and James Wood, currently to where the game is constructed right now, with power hitters taking off, taking over the game, Elijah Green and James Wood, they're at the forefront of this next discussion of the future of the Washington Nationals. I think the skill set that both of these guys have is warranted to be, I say, top five ceilings for both of them across MLB baseball. Talking about prospects. That's how high I am on both of these guys' ceilings. Therefore, they're so close. In the same organization, near the same age, it brings up the question, who has the higher ceiling between James Wood and Elijah Green? I'll rip the Band-Aid off, and I'm going to tell you my answer, and it's Elijah Green. And this is not just from what I saw yesterday. Just from his two at-bats, he had a strikeout in there. If we do remember coming out of the draft, Elijah Green, he was thought to be a high strikeout guy. That's probably why he didn't go even number one overall last year was because of his strikeout issues. So we get to Elijah Green. Let's start by this. Before we get into James Wood, you have to talk about Elijah Green. Now, Elijah Green is the lower prospect compared to James Wood. James Wood is as high as number five on some websites as far as prospects go. I even believe number three in some of them where you check. James Wood is an amazing player. This is not me picking one or the other and saying the other is going to suck because that's not the case. The Nationals have two guys that I think have insanely bright futures. And when I look at James Wood, for example, and I look and we talk ceiling, I look at him and I think that his ceiling is an Aaron Judge type. And it's, yes, maybe it's a little cliche because of the same height, tall, lanky, multiple different sports in his background. But no, it's just as simple as the fact that their production has been very similar and if not the same throughout their minor league career. And even then, Aaron Judge did not have the production that James Wood has had up through his first year and a half in the minor leagues. But also, what is a ceiling? Because this word is thrown out around a lot. I, including myself, I throw this word around way too much sometimes. But this is how I define a ceiling. It is about what he has done. It's about what he can do. It's looking at the talent 
what they have and putting it all together and ask the, what if he has all these five tools that could work out for this case? What specific talent can translate into being a better player? That's kind of what what it is talking about ceilings and what it goes into talking about Major League Baseball specifically. Well, these two guys, James Wood and Elijah Green, both have five tools. Elijah Green, he may not be an average hitter, but then again, in his limited time down in the Florida Rookie League, he was hitting for average. And then again, in high school, you look at it, he was also an average hitter there. So I'm going to check the box on James Wood, Elijah Green, for all five of these tools, hitting for average, hitting for power, fielding, arm strength, and speed. All five of those tools, James Wood and Elijah Green have. But I think Elijah Green, the prospect of him developing into an average, a batting average hitter, as well as the power, as well as the fielding, as well as the 70-grade speed that he has currently right now on MLB.com. That is the exciting part, is that Elijah Green, as much as we talk about James Wood and the power that he has, Elijah Green is just as powerful as James Wood at this moment. And that's saying that when one is 19 and the other is 20. So they're very close in age, very similar statures, very big, very mature. These are, when you look at them, seem to be pro-ready guys. Like, if you were to show me a picture of Elijah Green and the way that he looks in a Nationals uniform, I would have told you he's our starting center fielder. That's just the way that he looks. And same with James Wood. They both have these older, mature looks to them. But now it's getting down to the ceiling part of this. They've already got the five tools. We know that that's in their tool bag. But now how can we translate this into talking about their ceilings? Because yes, both of them have insanely high ceilings, but Elijah Green's just got a tad more. I think Elijah Green is on par with James Wood as far as power goes. Now, I wouldn't say the same for his batting average, Sanders. Is he going to hit for average the way that James Wood is projected to do? Probably not. But Elijah Green and the star power around him, the power, the opposite field triple that we saw yesterday, the speed we saw going around the bases, the speed portion in baseball is going to be much different than what it has been in year past. Stolen bases are going to be way up across the league. So what does that mean? Well, Major League Baseball and these GMs, they're going to start looking real deep on guys who are fast, and especially if you have the combination of speed and power, that was already a combination that has been valuable for years across baseball. Now, in an era that we expect will be much harder to catch runners trying to steal a base, it's going to be a tricky situation. So you add that combination of a speed and power guy together with Elijah Green, And not only that, someone who can play a great defensive center field, and that's what he's projected to be. That's his ultimate trajectory when you look at it. Because right now, he's sitting, he's got a 60-grade arm, and he's a 60-grade fielder. James Wood is hovering around that same area as well with a 55-grade arm and a 55-grade field. James Wood is the better overall hitter as we sit here today. But when combining in the fielding aspect of it, the power and the speed, I think it is Elijah Green. He has that edge when you combine all of that together. Because I think the value, as I've been saying, the speed and the power combo could be a better creation than macaroni and cheese. (laughs) I say that a little tongue in cheek. But then again, now baseball That's where we are headed to. And I think as time goes on, GMs, owners, all these decision makers are going to start valuing guys like Elijah Green. Once you get them in the system, I think you're going to be able to fix his strikeout issue, which he has been, he has had a strikeout issue in the past. And that was back in high school. 
at the IMG Academy. That is something that is true. Well, do you have faith in your development staff that you can fix this issue the way that they did with James Wood in San Diego? You should. And in fact, they probably will. Because that's the type of prospect that Elijah Green was. I don't think people really understand. Elijah Green was not supposed to be there at the fifth pick where the Nationals took him last year. In fact, he probably should have been a top three pick looking back on it. And I think a lot of teams will regret that eventually considering his ceiling is just that high. Because I would even make the case that Elijah Green has the highest ceiling in all, in all of MLB Pipeline system. You could say about Jordan Walker, he's got the ceiling that could be high. He seems to be a superstar the day that they're going to call him up, whenever that is. You could look at Anthony Volpe, shortstop for the New York Yankees. He could have the higher ceiling. Gunnar Henderson for the Baltimore Orioles. All these different guys. But then again, I am riding with Elijah Green. Elijah Green is that guy. I think the potential that he has is just much better than James Wood. And I've already said this. James Wood, in my mind, is a top five prospect when it comes to ceilings right now. I think Elijah Green could be one or two this very second of just of what he could be. I'm not projecting him to be the number one prospect in baseball. I'm not going to say that he's going to be some amazing superstar, some of the biggest, brightest stars in all of baseball. But that's his potential. And that is something that we, you and I, can get excited about. Not only can we get excited about, but it's not that crazy of a reality for the Nationals to have some superstar player like Elijah Green. I don't know about you guys, but I feel like the Nationals and Mike Grizzo have done pretty damn well developing stud outfielders. Let's say Bryce Harper, Juan Soto. Those two guys aren't bad, right? So yeah, James Wood and Elijah Green, two of the highest ceilings in all of baseball. In all of baseball. I'm rolling with Elijah Green with the higher ceiling over James Wood as we sit here today, March 14th, 2023. Of course, that could change, but I'm not changing that pick as we sit here today. Hey, hey. Elijah Green wasn't the only one who made noise over the last few days. It was our guy, Joey Bleepin' Manessis. Joey Season. That's what I call it. It is Joey Season. I'm going to tell you guys about Joey Manessis. We're going to talk about his World Baseball Classic heater that he's been on. But then also, we got to make it about the Nationals. So we got to talk about the season and Is this Joey Manessis guy a fluke, or is it starting to get a little too real? I'll tell you guys about that, but before, I'm really geeked out about telling you guys about our new partner and sponsor of today's episode, the mobile game Ultimate Baseball GM. Ever dreamed of becoming an MLB GM and managing your professional baseball franchise? Well, your dream can come true, and this game is definitely for you. Manage every strategic aspect of your team. Play through the season and lead your team to glory. And here's what you're responsible for. I've downloaded the game just like you guys should. I've picked the Washington Nationals and I've been making all sorts of moves. You wouldn't even want to hear about the evil that I have done on this Nationals team. I've traded away Josiah Gray in one of my Sims. I've traded away Kibar Ruiz in one of my Sims. CJ Abrams. I've been trying to make all the splash moves. All these moves that you and I want to make all the time, you can actually do it. Victor Robles, he is on the trade block as we speak for my Ultimate Pro Baseball GM app. This is the best. And all in this is a challenging, realistic game. Ultimate Baseball GM is completely free and playable offline. Play on the go as you want and then when you want to. And guys, my experience is pretty simple. I love it. I love to be a GM. It is easy. So you should download the app today. It'll be a fun little exercise. And Locked On Nationals listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo Locked On 
in the game store. So make sure to check it out. To download the game, just visit probaseballgm.com, scan the code, or look it up on the app stores. That's probaseballgm.com, Ultimate Baseball GM. Start your dynasty today. Joey Bleepin' Manassas. Joey Bleepin' Manassas. I don't know how to feel about this because I am rooting for Team USA. I am American after all. But Joey Manassas hits two home runs off Team USA and single-handedly defeated Team USA yesterday, two days ago, rather. Joey Manessis hit two home runs off Team USA, one of them being a huge shot for Team USA. Because, guys, if you haven't been watching the World Baseball Classic, Joey Manessis has been the talk around town when it comes to Team USA baseball. And, no. It's not because he plays on Team USA. He plays on Team Mexico. Team Mexico, they have major leaguers on their team. They've got a couple of solid guys. Joey Manessis, Rowdy Telez, two power bats in the middle of their lineup. And we know Team USA, they don't really have the pitching. But Joey Manessis yesterday, two days ago, I keep on saying yesterday, just went off on us. And honestly... No one saw this coming. In fact, a lot of people don't even know the name of Joey Manessis. Well, world, welcome to the show. Because while Joey Manessis had two home runs against Team USA, he had three hits in total, five RBIs, three runs scored, and only, and again, had three runners left on base. Three hits in five at bats, he had five RBIs. Two home runs. What is this guy? Because this is not normal. We talk about Joey Manessis and the fact that he could be something, that he could be a reputable DH in the National League. But also, what are the odds of this? How are we getting this lucky? Because down in spring training, Joey Manessis has not been himself. In fact, he's got a 200 batting average through 21 plate appearances, a 438 OPS. But then, man, when you have the bright light on them against Team USA, the favorite team to win the World Baseball Classic, Team Mexico, for the record, not favored, Joey Manessis lifts off Team Mexico and sits down Team USA. So what are we going to be getting from Joey Manessis? Because I'm getting ready to throw out my projections for him. Because, let's be honest, I think we all think this in the back of our minds just a little bit. The odds of him turning to be a great Major League Baseball player is a little low. Let's be honest. Because a lot of players get hot for two months. A lot of players. You remember Roger Bernadina? Those players get hot too. Joey Manessis, he could be in that pile. And with that, he's not the fielder that Roger Bernardino was. Bernardino was a great fielder. But here's my thing with Joey Manessis, because, of course, as we've talked about with Mackenzie Gore in the past, as he kind of went in spring training, the number projections weren't really there for Mackenzie Gore. I think they were hovering around a 4-3 ERA on baseball reference. Well, same goes for baseball reference with Joey Manessis. Somehow, some way, they have now projected him to be a 284 batting average, a 336 OBP with a 479 slugging. That's going to be good for an 816 on base plus slugging. That is a well above average major league hitter across the board, no matter n- what number you look at. They project him at 13 home runs and 40 RBIs. Only 292 at-bats. He's going to have a little more than that in my mind. But again, at 31 years old, how much can we rely on this guy? And is it foolish to even rely on him? And I don't think so. I don't think it's foolish at this point. 
I'm not saying that he's going to be some stud. But to say that he's not going to be at least an average MLB hitter, I think that's also a little crazy not to say. Because looking at his minor league numbers compared to what they are now at the Nationals, obviously what he did this past year, he was a top five hitter in all of baseball in the second half of that season. And you can check the numbers. You'll see for yourself on that. But what are reasonable expectations for a 31-year-old who's just coming off the minor leagues, 10 years down in the minor leagues, a stint in Japan. He was suspended from minor league baseball for steroid usage back in the day. He's been through it all. The story is incredible. Because quite frankly, I didn't really plan to talk about the World Baseball Classic. But when I saw Joey Manessis do what he did on Sunday, I had to talk about it and what he could be with the Nationals. Because that is the fun part of this exercise. It's not about what he will be. It's what he could be. That's the optimistic part when talking Joey Manessis. And with that, what he could be, I don't even know at this point. And that's a tough conversation to be had that I'll for sure get into more in spring training. But I don't know about you guys. I'm rooting for Joey Manessis right now. Team USA, I'm ultimately pulling for you. But Joey Manessis and Team Mexico, you hear that? You got a place in that heart right there. So, again, guys, I'm going to get into some more Nationals baseball-related activities. And with all these rule changes, we've all been talking about it. And I'll admit, I was wrong about the pitch clock. I like the pitch clock. But I want another rule to be changed. I won't be happy about this until it's done. I'm going to tell you guys about that. But before we get into that, I'm going to tell you guys about my friends over at FanDuel. The midway point of the NBA season is here, and now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can put on everything from the money lines to three-pointers drained to points in a game. It's that easy. And guys, you know what I do. If the Warriors are playing tonight, I'm putting my money on the Warriors' money line. I think they are going to be the hottest team in basketball down the stretch. You're not going to want to miss out on that. And guys, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same-game parlay. So don't miss a chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the NBA. As I was saying, I cried. I bitch and I moaned about all of the MLB rule changes. I'm a guy who doesn't like change. I don't. I'll admittedly say that. With that being said, I want to change one of these new rules. The three batter minimum for pitchers. Bye-bye. I don't want to see you anymore. I think that relievers, there should be situational positions that managers should be put in and as well as pitchers and players. Because let's be honest, the main strategy of baseball was shifting on defense. We took that away. We took it away. Well, how can you kind of implement some strategy for people who want to see this? Because at the end of the day, every sport across baseball There are decisions made by the coach slash manager that could affect the outcome of the game. And I actually like that part of it. I like that. It's a sport. Coaches and managers matter. Not as much as the players. It's about them. But also, I want to see some decision making. I want to see some strategy in baseball. The strategy that I miss was a left-handed pitcher coming in to face a Freddie Freeman for one at-bat 
getting the job done, getting pulled. What I miss is an Aaron Barrett to come in and face, name that right-handed hitter, to come in and shut the door down and then get yanked. There are guys in the bullpen who have roles, and important roles in some cases, that imply to just one specific thing in baseball. And with this rule, the three batter minimum, it's t- completely taken that away from it. The strategy, which I love in this situation, it should be implemented back in baseball for the better of everyone. I think the product would be even better. And yes, I know MLB is worried about time, but you got the pitch clock now. You have that. You don't have to do a three batter minimum. Because honestly, it's kind of stupid if we're talking about it. There are situations in games to where there are obvious decisions where relievers should be getting pulled and they won't and they can't because of that three batter minimum. So you've gotten the pace of play sorted out with the pitch clock. Now, guess what? Let's start to ramp up. Let's start to get back to these mojos with relievers. And let's get rid of the three batter minimum. Because here's something, MLB. If you're trying to tell me, well, it's going to take away from whatever it may be. Well, why don't you just give the pitcher a pitch clock to warm up? They're getting hot in the bullpen. Give them a minute and 20 seconds. You don't need a commercial break. Maybe you want it. I don't know. A minute and 20. Give them 80 seconds to warm up on the mound, get their feel, get the environment, get the juices flowing. How about that? Because if you don't want to do the full three-minute break, I get that. Just make it a minute 20. Cut down the commercial time. It's that that's that simple to me. I don't see why they don't do that, which is, in fact, some of the bigger problems. Because 18 commercial breaks throughout a baseball game, and that's at the minimum, Sometimes north of 24 commercial breaks during a game. Yeah, I think that also has to do with the, you know, time of game, the outcomes of games. So they never really thought about that. They wanted to implement the three batter minimum to stop taking away from situational pitchers out of the bullpen. Well, I'm here to say enough of that. Get rid of the three batter minimum. Go back to the traditional way of it. It still doesn't make sense to me. It still doesn't. And I admittedly admitted that the pitch clock has grown on me. And I like that. So thank you guys for making Locked On Nationals your first listen. Now for your second listen, check out Locked On Fantasy Baseball. Win your league by listening to Matt and Dom every day as they bring you the best fantasy draft strategies. Find Locked On Fantasy Baseball wherever you get your pods and on YouTube. Locked On Podcast, your team every day. Go Nationals. Let's watch some spring training baseball. We're going to get all back into this Nationals team tomorrow. Guess what? Go Nationals.